Hello and welcome to Speech 1315, TCC Speech 1315. I am Professor John Parrish and I want to welcome each of you. How exciting it is that you are freshmen in high school and taking a college level course. That is really something. I'm so proud of you for taking this challenge. The good news is you're going to be taking a college level course and you're going to get all these credits all along in your high school years. And by the time you graduate from high school, you'll probably have enough credits to earn an associate's degree. Now that's quite an accomplishment. The other thing I want to remind you of is this is a college level course. It's once you come into this course and start doing this course, it's no more high school. This is college. I am a professor. You will address me as Professor Parrish. This is college. And I'm going to treat and expect from you just what I expect from my college students on the campus or now virtually at TCC. So I expect the same level of work, the same level of research, the same level of everything across the board, just like they are expected to do their work. And the thing I want to drive home is this is an online course, and you'll have ample time to do your assignments and speeches. And there's time actually before they are due. So I want you to remember this. I do not, and I'm going to repeat that two more times. I do not, one more time, I do not accept late speeches or late work. I don't accept them. You're just going to get a zero. I don't care if you have any kind of problems. I don't care if you have whatever. No excuses. I do not accept late speeches because you can easily do your speeches at least a week and a half to two weeks before they're due and turn them in and post them on Connect. So be ready for that. There are no late assignments accepted, none whatsoever. So the key to that is to get your work in early. Get your work in early. All right, now, you've already looked at the syllabus because I've sent these to Mr. Mosley, and you should be thankful for him because he asked me for the syllabus and the course calendar and the important dates about two weeks before the course began. So hopefully you've seen those. You've looked through the course. That's the most important thing is the course calendar. You go through that. That is like the Bible of this class. It will tell you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. Week by week by week. Then there's the important dates. That tells you, okay, these speeches are due on this date. The, the speech assignment is due on this date. And the... Uh, it, you know, the, the topics that you're going to choose, these are due on this. It takes you through everything and tells you exactly what's going to be due, all right? So you know that. Look at those things and pay close attention to them and follow through on them. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is go into Blackboard, go into the class, our class, and then you'll want to get your book, your textbook. Now, how to do that is you go in, and you'll see uh, McGraw-Hill Connect. It's a link on the left-hand side of the page. Click on that, then it'll ask you to register, and it'll tell, ask for your email address, and you have to get a password or whatever. Then it takes you in and gives you a, the course, and you'll see, it, you'll say, take me to my course. Boom, you hit that, and it takes you to your course, and then you will see the assignments there. You'll see the assignments. There's a introductory speech assignment, there's a narrative speech assignment, there's an informative speech assignment, there's a persuasive speech assignment, and then the final exam. That's not all the assignments. There's one other assignment that you don't put on Connect, and that's your group assignment. Speaking of your assignments, if you go to the assignments tab, you will already find, and I've emailed these to you, so check your email, your TCC email. I have sent these to you as an attachment. They're also on the assignments board or on the assignments tab. And that will tell you your group assignment and your narrative speech dates. So 
you'll have it. Now, the fortunate thing for all of you is you're in one classroom. You all know each other. My students on campus, they're all over the place. And some of them may be in other states. I don't know. But you know each other. So being in the groups will be much easier because you can touch base with each other and connect with each other. And I suggest to my students on campus that they use their TCC email. But you may use whatever. You may use Zoom. You may, you may know their phone number. You may know how to contact them on it. You may have their email address already. But I want you to contact your group members right away, right away, because that's important. You're going to be doing a group assignment later in the semester where you're going to outline, I think it's about four chap yes, four chapters, and then you're going to submit that along with the PowerPoint presentation to me at the end of the semester. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So the first thing you want to do is go to that McGraw-Hill Connect link. Get your assignments. That's Connect. Everything you do except for the group assignment, all your speeches and your final exam are all done on Connect. Nowhere else. Don't send me anything on an email. Don't send me your speech. Do it on Connect. Do it on Connect. Now, and then your textbook, you'll go over to the left-hand side when you're on that Connect page, and you'll see at the bottom, it'll say the text, and you can click on that, and that brings up the text. It's an e-text. Now, there are more things in that e-text than just the chapters. I mean, in each chapter, there's little boxes and different things. You, can, you don't have to do any of those unless you want to. Now, they can help you, but that's not required. All I want you to do is read the material. And the first thing, the most important thing right off the bat, is to read the chapters of the group that you've been assigned to. So you know that. And then work on that. And you'll, you'll follow along with the group. And there's explanations on what I'm looking for from the group and all that. And the narrative speech and the different speeches. Everything is in the uh, course calendar. It will direct you to the lessons that will explain all these different things to you. So like in week number one, you're going to go through there and you'll, you'll read and it'll say go to lesson one. That's where your first assignment is due. That's the discussion board assignment. And on the discussion board, you just go to the link on the left-hand side, hit discussion board, you'll see it. You, you click on the discussion board and then you answer the question that I'd ask you. And you'll do that each week. So this week is the first week of Feb or the first week of class, but it's the 15th of February. So on the, I think it's the 18th. Yes, the 18th of February. I'm getting my calendar here. On the 18th of February, you will start doing your discussion board assignment. It's easy. It's, it's really quite simple. I can't remember what the first assignment is for the discussion board, but you have the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Just post them. On the 22nd, though, it's due by 2 p.m. Eastern, or 2 p.m. Central, not Eastern, 2 p.m. Central time. So add those in, add those in, and do your discussion board. Do your discussion board each week. Let me turn off my phone. It's, I don't know why this thing goes off, but anyway, um, anyway, uh, well, I know why it goes off, because someone's called me, and they don't, I don't want somebody to call me when I'm talking to you and I forgot to turn it off. I apologize for that. It's turned off now. See what happens when you, these new phones and all this stuff. But anyway, okay. So on the 18th of February, you're going to do your discussion board assignment, your first discussion board assignment. Boom. And you do it on the 18th, beginning on the 18th. And from now on, each week, there'll be a discussion board assignment. And you will begin those on the Thursday of that week. And it goes to Monday. So Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning, I look at those and take the roll. That's how I take the roll. We have to take the roll. So you just post the answer there. I go in, read your answer, meet you, find out a little bit about you. And then I do the roll. Now, if you miss one or two times, if you miss one, you're going to get a letter from TCC that says you're in danger of being dropped from the class. Well, you can miss one or two classes. That's not a big deal. That's, that's not a big deal. Please don't. I'm not, please don't do that. 
But if you miss one, well, you missed it. It's, 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 you were just absent or you forgot to do it, but you're going to get a letter from TCC or an email, I should say, from TCC telling you that you're in danger of being dropped. You're not. You're not. That's just a warning. That's just a warning. Please, please do your discussion board each week, beginning on Thursday till the Monday, so that I know you're there and I can count you present. If you're absent, you're going to get that email message. One or two absences is mm, two, since this is a 12 week course, you're pushing it. Don't push it. Please, it takes five minutes to just go in, answer the question, boom, do it. That's the discussion board. Okay. Then, now, in the next week, on the Thursday of the next week, which is the beginning on the 25th, that's when you do your discussion board. Now, I think the next week, the, tw the week of the uh, 22nd, let me check here. I think you have two assignments that day for the discussion board, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look. I'm going to look on the uh, important dates here. And uh, speech, informative speech and persuasive speeches are due. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I put that in here or not. Anyway, on that one. But it's on there. I think it's in the second week. And let me look in the syllabus here or in the uh, course calendar here to find out if it is. The discussion board, it's in, yeah, it's in, it's in number four. It's in lesson number four. There's two, I didn't put it in here because I just added these. I wanted to make sure that you knew how to do this. In week two, in week two, there's two parts to the discussion board. The first part is just go through and answer the questions. Go through and answer the questions that I have for the discussion board. Type those on the discussion board. Then save that as a document, as a PDF document. Then you're going to go back to connect and you're going to record and verbally read those. So you first you're gonna type it up. You're gonna type it up on the discussion board. These are my answers. Then you're gonna save that information and you're gonna use that as a script. Then you're going to go into the discussion or into the connect and you're going to post and record a video. And all you're doing is answering the questions that you've already answered. You're just going to kind of read them, you know, look at them and read. I want you to look at them and read them. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that you will, and there's a, there's, there's a uh, video that I've already recorded on this, a little longer than what this is. But the reason I want you to do that is so that I know you know how to use Connect. You can record a video and you can attach something to that video, Ta attach an attachment. And what you're going to attach is just what you've written for the discussion board. You've made it a PDF file. You attach it to, your dis to the video before you hit post. You'll see when you, when you record. And all of you know more about this than I do. I mean, I am not the one to, con to contact for any of this. If you have problems with Connect, there's an 800 number I've given you. Contact them. They can help you, but just make sure. All right, so what you're going to do is, is record that with a video on the video, and you're going to read that. What is your name? What's your chosen career? What, these are college course. You know, this is a – it's more for college level, but you're college level now, so we're going to find out about you. Then record it. Here's how you do that. You go to Connect. You said you're get ready to record. You'll see the little camera over there. You click on that, and it said, and you hit hit another. It goes to another tab. You know how to do all this, and then you'll see the record. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is just simply record the answers to that those the that that statement that you pr printed out or that you made for the discussion board. And you're going to give me the video of that. Okay. All I'm looking for. All I'm looking for is, did you know how to record it? Did you have any problems recording it? Did you post it correctly? And did you attach an attachment to it? That's it. That, that's basically it. Then after that, you're going to post it with your attachment, PDF attachment, and send it to me. Now, on the first video, it's not graded. It's not timed. Most students do them about two, three minutes. And all I'm looking for, don't worry, 
did I do a good job? No. All you're going to do is start the recording, go all the way through, and end the recording. That's it. Because what I'm looking for is, did you have good audio? Did you have good lighting? Did you have a good video? Technical things. That's all. Did you have a ceiling fan going off that drives us nuts at the top of the, you know, on your ceiling? Uh, could we hear you? Was the, was, the, was the camera, was it too dark? Was it too much light behind you? And all I'm going to do is just critique those things. That's it. Okay? I just want to make sure that you know how to use Connect. That's all. That's all you need to know. That's all I need to know. There's no grade. I'm going to tell you, well, work on this and bring up your audio. And to make life easier, please, please, please record everything on Connect. Use their platform. Now, you can use your phone, but it's so much easier if you just use Connect and use your computer and use Connect. Use what they have. It's so much easier because if you, you record it on your phone or, or whatever, Google Docs sometimes, then try to bring it to Connect. You have to upload it, and if you do it on your phone, the bandwidth or whatever is too wide, so you have to call, and they have to bring it down so you can put it up there. The other thing I want to remind you of is that when you record something, and this is important for this speech and the others, that you begin the recording. Once you start the recording, give yourself a couple seconds, then start your speech, and then end. I do not want you to edit your speeches. Do not edit your speeches. Don't do that because it's not appropriate. This is a public speaking class, and you have to pretend that you are in front of an audience giving a speech. So if you were live giving a live speech in front of an audience, you wouldn't have an edit. You, would, you wouldn't do that. So make sure you start, and then when you finish, stop your recording. Give yourself a couple seconds after that to stop the recording. All right? It's one shot. One shot. Now, the thing that's neat about this is you, these are recorded. You're not live. So you can practice. You can do a practice session and say, hmm, eh, that wasn't bad. Then you do another practice session. Ooh, that's a good one. But I think I could do better. Then you do a third one and, oh, you know, that wasn't so good. But I like that second one. So you go back to the second one and you put your attachment on it and you hit post and you post it. And the others, you just, you know, delete those. That's the neat thing about this. You don't have to send your first one and only shot at it. You can re practice. Now, from then on, you're going to practice. You can practice the narrative speeches next. You could do a couple practice versions, maybe three or four. And you pick out the best one and you say, that's the one I want to send in. Now, if you wait to the last minute, you won't be able to do that. You'll just have to do your speech and then post it because it must be in by 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Central Time on the due date that it is assigned to you. So like on your narrative speech, I think there's two specific dates. Some of you are on this date. Some of you are on this date. Now, you can, all of you can present them earlier. Do. Please do. Submit them much earlier than the due date. But once the due date is there, it's 2 p.m. Central. If it's one minute or one second after 2 p.m., that's a zero. I will not accept it. If it is one second late, I will not accept it. So do not wait until the last minute. All right. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is on your speeches, when you're doing your presentations, gentlemen, look how I'm dressed. Now, this is, this is business casual, so to speak. But I want you to dress up. I've given you a PDF. There's a PDF on business attire. It talks about the boardroom attire and the business casual. I don't expect you to do boardroom, but I want you to dress up. So, gentlemen, I'm talking to the men right now. Gentlemen, that's not polo shirts. That's this is sport jacket, dress shirt, nice sweater. But I want you to dress up. Not polo shirts, not some kind of loungewear, nothing like that. I want you to look professional. Ladies, I cannot demonstrate for you or display for you or model for you, for that matter, women's clothing. 
But look at that PDF, and that will tell you. I do not want casual wear. I want you to look professional. You must look. If you're not dressed up, I won't even look at it. That's a zero. So don't don't think, oh, he's not going to. I will. If you're not dressed up, if you're not dressed appropriately for this, I will not look at your speech. I won't look at it. So don't don't play that game. Well, I don't have. Well, you have something that looks nice. And gentlemen, a lot of my students tell me, well, I don't have a sport jacket. Go to the thrift store. They have plenty of them there for five dollars. You can afford a phone. You can have your phone. You got, you know, whatever. You can afford to get a nice dress shirt, a dress shirt, even if it's at the thrift store. I don't care if it's at the thrift store. Or a jacket. Dress up. I want you to look professional. That is so vitally, vitally important. And from this speech on, all your speeches, dress up. Dress appropriately. Dress appropriately or I won't look at them. If you're not dressed up on the first speech, then I will tell you. It doesn't matter so much on the first speech, but I'm going to tell you, that's not appropriate dress wear. Make sure you do it because the others count. Remember again, I do not, I do not, I do not accept late speeches or late assignments. So make sure you get your speeches in on time. All right. Then in the third week, and you've already looked at the syllabus, you know that in the third week of the class, you have an assignment. It's on the discussion board. And that begins uh, the, let's see, I think it's the 4th of March, maybe? I'm going to look at my calendar here. Yeah, begins the 4th of March and ends on the 8th of March. You must send me your three informative topics and your three persuasive topics. Now, I want you to put them, just follow the directions on how to do it, put them in the order of your preference. So your first one is number one, your second choice is number two, and your third choice is number three. Put them in that order. The best topics I've found are the topics, diseases, or mental conditions, or maybe countries. Those work best. And the good thing about them is they're easy. They're easy to do. Please, please, I, I'm not looking for, I mean, if you want to do any topic, I have to approve it. That's fine. But choose something that's relatively easy to do because you're not going to, you don't have enough time to do a lot of research on these. Well, let's go back to the narrative. The narrative speech, the narrative speech is, is only three to five minutes. But this informative speech that you're going to be doing is eight to 10. You don't have a lot of time to develop a real in-depth speech. I mean, you have to have four sources in your bibliography, but you don't have enough time to develop it deeply. So you want to keep it relatively easy for yourself. Now, let's say you chose the topic of diabetes. Right? You want to do diabetes. Now, in a, in a speech, much like a term paper or an essay, you have to have three main points. You know, the, first point, second point, third point, introduction, thesis statement, the whole, you know, you know the basics of that. And what you're going to do is, let's say you chose diabetes. So what could your three points be? And this is how easy it can be. What is the definition of diabetes? What's our definition, the common vernacular definition? And what's the, the, the medical definition according to medical books? What's their definition of diabetes? What determines if you have diabetes? So what is diabetes? Point number two, who's affected by diabetes? And then you talk about, is it men, women? Is it older? Is it younger? What is it? Is it caused by diet? What exactly is, or, you know, who's affected by diabetes? Who is predominantly affected? And then the third point would be, what are the treatments for diabetes? So you talk about, you know, the insulin shots and the pills or, or whatever. And then you'll have to have a, a chart, a graph to show the difference. So if you're talking about uh, who's affected by diabetes, you could show male is this, female is this, uh, young people are this, older people, whatever. All right. So you want to do that. So think along those lines for topics. That's in your third week of I think it's in lesson number four, lesson number four. Okay, 
And then the last speech is the persuasive. But now we're just talking about topics. So make sure you get, send me your three informative. This is in week number three. Your three informative topics in the order of your preference. And I cannot guarantee you will get that subject that you've given me, but I'm going to try my hardest to give you the topic that you would like. But I can't always do that because if someone has already taken diabetes, no one else will get it. So have three of them and let me determine those. And then if I can't give you one of those and all of your topics are taken or they don't work and some topics that don't work, I don't want a person. Don't, don't send me the name of a person. I don't want that. It won't work. It's not that it's a bad speech topic. It just won't work for this because I need statistics. Don't tell me a how-to speech. Don't give me that because that won't work. That's not what we're doing. Our demonstration speech, that's not what we're doing. I want to demonstrate. No, you're going to inform us about something, and it has to have research in it. So make sure you choose one of those topics. And you can go to Google. Google. You can type in, just type in a search and say, topics for informative. And I've also given you... Uh, several links, several places to find informative and persuasive speeches. Those are in your lessons, okay? Now, the next one is the persuasive. You're going to have to give me three persuasive topics. And uh, again, in the order of your preference. But make sure when you give me those, you, give, you tell me, I am for this or I am opposed to this. I'm for this or I'm opposed to this. Let me know, because if you don't tell me whether you're for it or against it, I'll choose. And then if, it, if I choose the wrong side for you, sorry, it's too late. So make sure you tell me I am in favor of this or I am opposed to this. Now, there are several places, and I've listed them, where you can find topics. Uh, Procon.org is the very best, the very best. I mean, that's great. And if you want to go to the TCC library, there's opposing viewpoints and issues and controversies. Those are all great. But you can also do Google, Google Scholar and look there. But Procon.org is by far the best source I've found for any kind of persuasive topic. The reason being is you can go in there and you'll see all these topics. You click on one, and then it gives you arguments for both sides. Now, this speech is long. It's 12 to 14 minutes. And the reason I'm so long on these speeches, I mean, I'm sure some of your colleagues are taking speech classes and they're maybe doing five minute speeches or whatever, and you're doing a 14, 12 to 14, and you're, oh my God, why do, well, the reason is I'm preparing you to do a TED talk. I want you to be able to do a TED, and those are 18 minutes. So if you want to do a TED talk, you got to be prepared for that. And a five minute speech, if you did just narrative speeches, where three to five minutes, that would not prepare you for a TED Talk. And that does not prepare you for doing in-depth research and presenting a material at that length. This is college. This is college. And so I want you to be able to do this work and be able to say, hey, and then the next semester when you're in history or whatever and the professor says, oh, you have to do a seven-minute speech, and everybody's like, oh, 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 we've never done over five minutes. I've never done anything over three. You're like, seven minutes? That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. I can do that standing on my head. That's nothing. That's what I want. I can't tell you how many times students have come to me and said, oh, Professor Parrish, oh, I am so glad you made us do long speeches. And you think they're long, but I've had students that wanted to do 18 to 20 minutes. They said, Please, may I do more because there's so much more I can tell. And, and I can't do that because I don't have time in, when I'm in the classroom. But they're like, you know, I went to the class and I, I, I dressed professionally and I went in and I blew them away. I blew them away. And the other student, nobody else wanted to present that day because we had to do this little seven-minute thing and it was nothing. I got up there, boom, 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 because I knew how to do this and I was prepared. And seven minutes was nothing. Absolutely nothing. I didn't do that, you know, standing on my head. So that's why I have you do these. Now, you go to procon.org, you're going to find both sides of an issue. Click on, let's say, legalization marijuana. Click on it, and you'll see those that are opposed to it, arguments for opposing, and those in favor. Now, you're going to have to incorporate both of those, whichever side you take. 
because you have to say, well, my opponent will tell you this, but let's look at the real issue on this side of it. So it's back and forth a little bit. Now, I want you to choose any topic you'd like. There's plenty of them in there. You know, you can do immigration reform. You can do legalization of marijuana. You can do, you know, should college be, should you go to college? Should you stay in college? Should you go to college? Is it a waste of time or should you just go to trade school? That's a good topic, actually. Um, and controversial topics. What are some controversial topics? Immigration reform is a good one. Ah, how about mandatory vaccine, not just for children, but for adults with COVID? Should you be required to get a vaccine for COVID in order to travel or, or be in society? Should that be a mandated requirement? Or what? Well, that's a great controversial topic. Um, legalization of, oh, let's see, what are some other things? Should we legalize, um, I don't know, whatever. You know, pick a good topic. Pick something, you can pick something controversial if you want to. That's fine. Lower the drinking age. There's one controversial. Should we lower the drinking age? Should we make smoking illegal? Should we, um, I, I don't know. One of my students picked legalization of all drugs. Should we do that? That's controversial. But those are good topics because they get your fire going. You know, it's like, ooh, should we raise taxes? Should we make people pay more taxes? Should we, um, you know, should we join the Reddit crowd and get these high dollar people on Wall Street that are making all this money and the little guy very seldom makes anything? Should we, you know, do that? Should, whatever, whatever, just have fun with it. Pick a topic you like, pick something you want to choose that, that, is motivated by you, that you're motivated by, and then persuade us, persuade us. Don't choose something that would, you're gonna sell us something. Don't do that. Don't try to sell us a car. Don't try to sell us something where we actually have to buy something. Don't do that. These are more ideas, you know, like changing the law or implementing some new whatever, changing, you know, like climate change. We need to do something about climate change. That's changing a law or changing the way we behave, not actually tangibly buying something. You don't want to do that, all right? So you've got your introductory speech, which is due in the second week. You've got your topics that are coming. Well, no, in the second week, you've got your introductory speech. Yeah, your introductory speech and then your discussion board. And then after that, you've got the choosing of the topics, and then later is your narrative speech. I don't know the exact dates for the narrative speech. I'll find that here in a minute. But the narrative speech, let's go back to the narrative speech. The narrative speech is just, just a story, a story that about you, something that's happened to you. You know, a story, it's only three to five minutes. You don't have to, this is the fun speech. You don't have to do a lot of preparation for this. Well, you know, you should practice, but think of your story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And don't read your story to us. It's your story. You can, or, or even when you're doing your introductory speech, don't read them. In other words, don't da, 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 don't do that. You know, don't don't read to us because then we'll go to sleep. If you read to us, that's what that's what your parents did when you were a wee little child. They read a story to you. And what did you do? You went to sleep. You don't want to do that. So you want to look at us. You might have notes. But you want to look at us, and it's your story. I mean, a narrative speech is your story. Now, when you get to the informative and the persuasive, you're going to have notes for sure, and you're going to refer to them, and you're going to cite your sources. You're going to, and it talks about all that in the lessons. There's all that information in the lessons that you can glean from. So, but on your narrative speech, the first speech, you know, that introductory speech, you're just reading. My name is Joe, Joe, whatever, Joe Blue, or. Joe, Tammy Sue, or, or whatever your name is, and you're going to tell me your career chosen field and why you chose that or whatever. And you're a freshman in high school, so that could change next week, your chosen career. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just pick something you really are interested in and tell me about. It. Just go down through the list, all right? And then record it and post it and send it in. Then when you get to the narrative speech, you're going to tell a story something that happened to you, something that happened to you, all right? Now, in that story, you're going to just, it has a beginning, middle, and end, but you must have conflict in it. 
So maybe you're going to tell me about the first time you went bungee jumping or the first time you went skydiving or scuba diving or, or you went on a trip or whatever, but you've got to have some kind of conflict. So I'm sure you're not as old as I am. You haven't been around the block as many times as I've been, so you probably don't have that much conflict in your life. Well, you probably have a little bit, but you can, in this speech, in this speech only, just for the narrative, you can enhance the conflict, which means you can lie a little bit, creatively lie, just a little. All right, so like if you, you've heard these fishermen stories, the people that go fishing, a man goes fishing, catches a fish that's this big. The next time he tells the story, it's this big. And the next time, it's a whale. I mean, you know, it's a huge. Well, don't go overboard. You know, I took a trip to the moon or something. Although Elon Musk is going to send four people into space that are not astronauts. I don't know when, but they're coming up after the Super Bowl or something. They're going to choose people to go into space. Four people. Four people. Can you believe that? Tell me a story. Tell me a story. Something that happened to you. Let's say you went on a trip and the car broke down. All right. Maybe it really didn't break down all that much, but make it bigger than it was, you know? Oh, the car broke down and we were stranded and just make it really fun. Make it a really fun story. So you know, lie a little bit. It's okay. It's a story. It's just a story. And I want you to be dramatic. You know? I want you to be dramatic. Then the next speech, like we said, is the informative. That's eight to 10 minutes in length. That requires research. You've got to have a bibliography. And you go through your three main points. Then the last speech is 12 to 14 minutes. That's the persuasive. You're going to persuade me to legalize marijuana in Texas. You know, recreational marijuana in Texas. You're going to persuade me that Texas needs to have legalized casino gambling. We used to many, many years ago in Arlington. There was, a, there was a casino. I didn't know that. It's now a Christian college or something. But that was a casino at one time, long, long time ago. And so you see, those are things I want you to persuade me on, okay? So those are the assignments. Make sure, make sure you do them early or at least by 2 p.m. on the day they are due. And make sure you dress up, dress up, ladies and gentlemen, no hats. No, none of that. I want to see you. And the good news is you only have to dress from the waist up. I don't care what you wear on below that. You can wear sweatpants. You can wear shorts. You can wear whatever. But from the waist up, you better look professional because you're sitting in front of the audience. You're sitting in front of this camera. And look at the camera. I know it's hard. Believe me. I know it's hard because there's not an audience out there. You, you're not looking from side to side. You're not. There's no eye contact. There's no feedback. It's very, very difficult. I know that. So just look at the camera as much as you can and look at your notes and look at us. That's what I'm looking for. And have fun. I want you to have fun with these assignments and, and have fun with this class. Okay, then the last assignment is the exam. And well, no, that's not the last exam, not, not the last assignment. The, this, there's actually an assignment right between the informative and the persuasive. And it's your group presentation. Now, you've already been assigned to a group. And the advantage you have is you know each other. You all know each other because you're in a classroom together. Some of you are. I guess some of you are virtual. But some of you, but you know each other. So you've met each other. Well, the first thing I want you to do after this assignment is to get with your group. Get with your group and coordinate something. Now, coordinate how you're going to handle this group project. That's that's a big project to do. What you're going to do is each group is assigned, I think there's, there's five groups, and you're going to be assigned four chapters in the textbook. What I want you to do, there's examples of this in the lessons. I want you to outline thoroughly, and I mean thoroughly, those four chapters. And then, now this is a group effort, a group effort, not just one person, not just two, but I think there's three or four of you in each group. Maybe one group has three. I'm not sure. But I want you to work as a group. It is vitally important. It's vitally important. I don't want one person to do all the work. I don't want two people to. I will want, if there's four in your group, I want all four of you to pull your weight. Now, that's very important. Or if there's three, I want all three of you 
to pull equal weight. It's not fair to someone to do all the work and be left holding the bag. That's not going to work. That won't, I don't accept that. So please, please get with your group and, and figure out as a group, maybe you'll need to appoint somebody as the leader and say, okay, these are the things we're going to do. We're going to, you outline this. I'm going to outline this. I'm going to outline this. You know, if there's four in each group, each one of you could outline a chapter and then one person could put it all together or maybe one or maybe you could do one and a half chapters each for three of you. And then they put it all together. The one other person puts it all together and then creates the PowerPoint. So what you're going to do is you're going to outline completely the four chapters that I've assigned you. You're going to outline those completely and then come up with a PowerPoint that emphasizes or highlights main points within all the chapters. So you're going to give me a power and I've given you examples of all of this. So the outline and the PowerPoint. Now those are due, I think on April 13th or something. I think that's when it's due. I'll, I'll tell you the date in a minute here. You do not do that on Connect. That's the only assignment you do not do. You do not do that on Connect. You will send that to everyone on, I think it's April 13th. I'm not, I'm not, a, well, let me check. I think it's April 13th, though. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see. April 13th. Yes, it's April 13th. You're going to send that to me, and you're going to send it to everyone in class using their TCC email. Okay? But the main thing, make sure I get it. That's your complete outline and your PowerPoint presentation that goes with it. Everything together. You send it to me on my TCC email, which is john.parish at tccd.e. It's, it's all in the lesson, all in the, in the uh, course calendar. And then you're going to send it to everyone on their TCC email. And the way you do that is you, on the uh, homepage, before you go to the class, on the main page of Blackboard, you look on the left-hand side, you scroll down where it says, contact teachers and students click on that then it will take you to a new 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 thing a new page and then you'll see it'll have contact groups and then but it says contact all student users you click on that and you say here's group number one's outline and powerpoint put those as attachments and hit send or yeah i think it's send or or post or I can't remember what, what it, submit. I think it says submit. I'm not sure what it says at the bottom, but you'll see it. It says cancel or submit, I think. You hit that, it goes to everyone in class. One shot, one deal. Now, for me, you're going to have to do it on a separate email to john.parish at tccd.edu. Make sure you do it on the 13th. If it comes in after the 13th, all of you in the group will get a zero. Don't do that. Don't do that. I had that happen once. One of my groups... They gave it to one person to submit. I only want one from each group. So make sure you designate one person from each group that will send that to everyone in class. Make sure only one person. I don't want four different things. I want only one, one from each group. You will submit it to me and submit it to everyone in class. Now make sure you do it and make sure that others of you have the outline and the PowerPoint just in case something happens with that person because that happened last semester. One of my groups, they all worked together, but the guy that was going to send it in, he failed to send it in on the day it was due, so he sent it in on the day it was after. Well, that meant everyone in the group gets a zero, even though it was completed. And that's just the way the rules are. So he wrote me and he said, please, professor, I made the mistake. Would you give me the zero and let the other students get the grade? So I said, okay, I'm gonna give you the zero because you admitted you made a mistake. They got a grade, it was lower than what they would have gotten because I counted it late as a late assignment. But he got the zero, but he was man enough to step up to the plate and say, I'm the one that made the mistake. Penalize me, not them. All right, so I did. But ordinarily, it would have just been a zero across the board. Now, there's one other thing I want to remind you of, and that is, I've said this before, everyone must pull their weight. Now, 
I mean everyone. Now, if you're having problems with a group member and that group member will not do anything, I want you to contact your teacher, Mr. Mosley, and tell them, tell him, we're having problems with this student. He or she will not participate, will not answer, will not do this. Please tell him. Please tell it doesn't really help to tell me because I can only write them an email and I can only write them an email or, you know, this is something you have to deal with. But I want you to contact Mr. Mosley and tell him. If he deals with them and gets them, hopefully they will respond and do their work. If after he talks to them, maybe he has to talk to them two times. Don't wait on this. I mean, give them several weeks. But if they won't do anything after Mr. Mosley talks to them once or twice, keep in contact with him on issues like this. Not me, because I'm not going to, that's not, I'm not going to follow up with that. That's your responsibility. In the in in at TCC, they don't have a Mr. Mosley. You do, but they don't. So I tell them, contact your group if you can't get in, if they won't do anything and you've given them several weeks and you've tried and tried and they won't do anything, then you you pretend you're Donald Trump and you fire them. And if, if you've tried to get in contact with them, then you contact Mr. Mosley and he's contacted them and a couple times and they still won't do anything, then it's time to cut them. And all you do is you send them an email and make sure you CC me and you fire them. And I will give them a zero because that's what they deserve. If they're not going to work and they're not going to participate in the group, then they need to get a zero. That's what we do. There's no putting up. It's not fair to the rest of you to have someone tag along and get the grade you got and they did nothing. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't fly in this class. Other classes maybe, but not in my class. That's not fair to you. If they will not do anything after you've contacted them, after you've tried, You've contacted Mr. Mosley, and he has tried and contacted them and told them to get on, get with it, and maybe talk to them twice. Then it's time to say adios, goodbye, that's it, you're fired. Then they can just get the zero. That's it. Now, you can do whatever you want, but just remember, if they don't do anything, they're not going to help your group. And if they haven't done anything, even after Mr. Mosley speaks to them, they're probably never going to do anything anyway. So get rid of them. Get rid of them. I hope, I hope that doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens in my other classes where students have to fire people. You know, regular TCC, a lot of students drop because they say, oh, this is too much work. I don't want to do this or whatever. And they drop. So it's left to one person to do the whole thing a lot of times. Or I've had one person fire the rest of the group. And they did it themselves because the rest of the group wouldn't work. But I don't think that's going to happen with you because all of you know each other and you're a tight-knit group, I'm sure. And so you know each other and you, you just have more connection with each other. And so just say, come on, get, get with the program. Let's do this thing and really blow him away with a great presentation and a great work. So now what, the, what the, the reason I have you do that is because each group, you're going to know four chapters inside and out. You're going to know your four. Group one, you're going to know your four. Group two, you're going to know your four, three, four, and five. You're all going to know your four chapters really well. Then when the other groups send you their outlines, of course, read all the chapters because you're going to see that in your uh, course calendar to read those chapters. And the first couple of weeks, it's going to be intense. The reading is intense. The chapters are intense. Please. But, but before you read all those chapters that I've assigned, make sure you read the chapters for your group first. Make sure you read the chapters for your group first because that's the most important thing. Then read the others. And you can pace it out. It's, it's a lot of reading, yes. But you are now in a 12-week course instead of a 16-week course. So you're 25% it's going to be 25% faster than a 16 week course. But I don't want to hear any complaints or any, oh my gosh, he's making us really work. Yes, I am. It's a college level course. And if you ever take a mini semester 
at TCC. A mini semester, what you do in 12 weeks, what my other students are doing in 16 weeks, they do in 11 days. Days as in D, days, 11 days. Everything that you do in 12 weeks and my other students do in 16 weeks, they do in 11 days. So there's no excuse. Don't whine. Don't, oh, this is so much work. Tough. They can do it in 11 days, and they do. I've never had so many A's as I did my last mini semester. The students really do their work 11 days. So I don't want to hear any complaints. But the first couple of weeks are pretty intense. You're going to have to go through those and just pace yourself. Read your chapters that are assigned to you for your group first. Read those first. Then start reading the rest of the chapters because at the end. So you see, once you get all those chapters read, then you can start outlining. You can start putting your PowerPoint together. And you can have your presentation ready by April 13th. That's a couple of months away. Anyway, then, so each group will know their four chapters inside and out. Then they're going to share those with the rest of the class. So you can look over those outlines, look over those PowerPoints for the main things. Then at the end of it, it's like a review. It's a complete review for the exam from all those outlines. Then at the end of the semester, we have our final exam. And oh, it's a couple of weeks before the end. I'm going to send out to you a review. It will be a review of everything you need to know for the exam. Now, the majority of my students last semester, I've never had so many A's. In fact, one student missed one question, one because the review is very thorough. I mean, I tell you exactly. There's only 50 questions. You have an hour and 20 minutes to take the exam, or two, I'm not sure, hour and 20 minutes or two hours. It shouldn't take you over 30 minutes. The main thing on an exam, it's multiple choice, is you know the answer, you read the question, you know, oh, that's answer B. Mark it, go to the next question. Don't go back and change it. Because when we're in the classroom, and I watch the students, oh, I watch them and they erase. And then I get their Scantron, and I looked at it, and I'm like, they erased the correct answer and put the wrong answer because they second guess them. Don't second guess yourself. Just answer it, move on. Answer the question, move on. Don't go back. Don't go back. Because you major 90% of the time, 99% of the time, I should say, you know the right answer. Boom. That's it. Just go with the right, go with your gut feeling. Oh, that's the right answer. You know it. So that's why I have you do these outlines because it's like a big review for the exam. So you've read all the material, read all the chapters. Please read the chapters. Please read them. And then review the outlines and their PowerPoints. And then review my review statement, my review stuff, my view, review thing. And, and, uh, and there it is again. And I turned the darn thing off. <laughs> My smartphone is smarter than I am, but anyway. Oh, I apologize for that. I don't know why. Oh, I'm going to have to ask you guys how to do this stuff because it just it says do not disturb and it still comes through. I don't know. But anyway, so <laughs> I lost my train of thought now. But anyway, that's why I have you do the groups and the group outlines and all of that. So please, please, please do those. All right. Now. So, and then the last speech, like I said, is the persuasive speech. So here we go, you know, and let's go through this. And uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, course calendar. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. It's not the syllabus. You can read through the syllabus. But there are some things I want you to be aware of. And let me put my glasses on here. I want, I want to put my glasses on. Uh, and you'll see that, like, remember I said I was the speech god for a minute? Well, I have 12 commandments. God himself only has 10. I have 12, 12 or 13. But the first one is I do not accept late speeches. I've said that 10 times already. You know that. It's everywhere in the course calendar. It's all over the, the lessons. It's everywhere. All right? And then always check your emails. I'm going to be sending out occasionally, not all the time, emails on your TCC email. And you may email me and contact me. I'm available on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time. 
Tuesdays and Wednesdays, that's the best time to reach me. That's when I am in have office hours, and you can reach me, and I'll get back with you. Now, you can send me an email outside of those times, but I may not, I probably will not get back to you right away. And I may not get back to you until the next office hours thing, office hours time. So email me if you have questions or problems. Email me from 10 to 3 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Email me at those times, okay? All right. Now, uh, check those. Make sure you check your emails. And the first thing I want you to do is check your assignment tab because your assignments are there. I've already emailed you an email about that. So check those out, okay? And then uh, do your discussion board. Oh, and when, you, and when you do email me, tell me your first name and your last name and give me just on there, give me your first name and your last name. And it says put your section number in there. You can do that, but you can also say I'm a Southwest High School, from Southwest High School. My name is Sarah Jones. Southwest High School. Then I'll know your sec because you're different than all the other sections. So I'm Southwest High School. Or just give me your section number, which is on your blackboard. You'll see that. It'll say spring SP, spring 2021 or whatever. And then it'll have speech SPCH 1315 dash. And then there'll be a number. And that will be your section number. But you can just say, my name is Sarah Jones. I'm in the Southwest High School class. That's it. And then ask me your question. If you don't do that, then it makes it much more difficult for me because I have to find you and it delays my response to you because I have to find, who is this person? Always give me, tell me you're from Southwest High School or give me your section number. Either one. When you email me, okay, make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. Give me either your section number or I'm Southwest High School. You can do either one, okay? Do that. All right, check your emails. I don't know what is going on with this thing. Anyway, and then uh, do your discussion boards each week. Make sure you do those each week. And you, you're not going to miss this virtual classroom because I've sent it to you as an attachment. So when you go to connect, oh, here's a very important thing. When you go to connect, do not pay attention to the dates on connect. Do not pay attention to the dates on Connect. Those are only the dates that that assignment is open for the entire class because everyone has different dates they're doing their assignments in. Do not pay attention to that. Only pay attention to your specific date that your speech is due. I want to make that clear. Do not pay attention to the dates on Connect. Those are only the dates that are available for that assignment to be open because everyone has different dates and I space things out or otherwise I would get all the speeches at once and I don't want to do that. So don't pay attention to those dates on Connect, only to your specific date, which is found on the assignments tab. There's an attachment there. It has your dates on it, okay? Uh, all right, I only accept PDF files. Make sure any attachment you send with your Connect video that it is a PDF file. Please make it a PDF file. It makes it so much easier for me. I can open it right there. I don't have to download it and then open it. Make it a PDF file. Uh, do not send me any of videos or any of your speech stuff to my email address. Everything is done on Connect. And make sure when you're recording your videos, you go on Connect, you start your video. You do your speech, then you end your video. Do not edit your speech. Do not edit your speech. You start your video, you end it. Then if you're going to send it in, you attach whatever's due for the attachment, and you post it. You post it. There'll be red, red tabs that come up there, and you post it. It'll say post. Boom. You hit that. Okay? Uh, you are only required to do the assignments that I have given you. Like I said, in the ebook, there are extra assignments. You don't have to do those. Just read the chapters. That's all you have to do. Uh, make sure you read all the chapters in the text. That will help you with the final exam. And it will help you with the speeches in general. Okay? And watch all the student speeches. Oh, that's another thing I didn't talk about. In the, in the lessons, there's examples of all the outlines. 
there's examples of like for the group there's example of the outline and the PowerPoint for the other speeches there's examples of the speech there's examples of the cover page you know like the narrative speech I did a narrative speech I had a student do in there you can look at all those and those will tell you, you can look at that and that'll tell you look at the informative speeches I have several examples of student informative speeches plus I've given you a lecture on it look at those and look at your look at your um, thing that will show you all the all the all the stuff that you have to do okay so you want to look at the the speeches that are there and you want to look at the outlines that are there you want to look at both of those same for the persuasive look at all those examples make sure you do that they're embedded in all of in many of the lessons you can see here's an example here student speeches for the persuasive here's here's the example of the persuasive outline and follow those to the T here's an example of the narrative speech here's an example of the uh, informative speech here's student examples here's an example of the outline the cover page the whole bit the, the the bibliography it's all there follow those to the T follow those to the T that's what I expect you to do all right there are tabs there the first tab is the assignments tab you go there, you're going to check your assignments. The next tab, uh, the next tab is the McGraw Hill Connect. That's where you're going to go to get your, to get Connect and your textbook, your e textbook. That'll all be there. You have to register. It's pretty self evident. And there's a, there's an example there. There's something you'll see in the welcome that will take you through how to do that. And make sure you're clear. Oh, and if you have a problem with anything, uh, I have given you a, uh, an example, not an example, but in case you have problems, if there's an 800 number I've given you, and call them. It's 800 331 Is it 50094? Yes, it is. 5094. Call them. Do not call me if you have technical issues with Connect. I can't help you. They will help you. Call them. Call them. Okay. Then the last tab make sure only record your speeches on connect do them and record them straight through and then what's the last tab i'm trying to find it here um and then uh the next tab is the mcgraw hill and then okay there's another one here i've got to get it the third tab is the lessons tab make sure you go there and go to your different lessons week one you're going to go to lesson you're going to look at lessons one, two, and three. Week two, you're going to lessons four, five, and six. But it says in there, in group, in the first one, lesson one has the discussion board. In the second one, it says lesson four has the discussion board. And that's two things. That's the, that's the introduction speech and the discussion board. And then it goes to, I think, number seven, lesson number seven, because you do four, five, and six. And then lesson seven, that's where you do your speech topics. Make sure you do all of those. Make sure you do all of those. And the calendar is given by week to week. And then always remember this. And in case you have, just read through this. And I'm sure you've gotten a copy of it already. Read through this. And if you have any problems with Connect, call them. Call them. That's their job. They will help you. And if remember else, I do not accept late speeches. I do not expect late, accept late speeches. Here's week number one. You're going to go through all that. Read that. Week number two, week number three, week number four. Then we have spring break coming up. I know it's pretty soon, actually, in March, middle of March. We have week that. So just follow the examples in the course calendar. This is the most important thing for you to have for this class. This is the most important thing. Much more important than the syllabus. This tells you everything. This tells you everything. Most important. Most important. Do your discussions. Do the assignments and just keep up. Pace yourself. Keep up. Read this material and keep up. Do not do the discussion boards ahead of time. Do them each week, beginning on Thursday of the week they're assigned. Do not go ahead. Well, I'm going to get these discussion boards. No, don't, because I clear them and then I go to the next week and then you'll be counted absent if you did it. So make sure you do it in the week. The first week, you're going to begin on the, what is it, the 18th. 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Make sure it's in by 2 p.m. Central on the 22nd. Now, so read through this, this course calendar. 
And then what I'm going to do is go over this. It talks about a virtual classroom. I'm going to, this is what the virtual classroom is. We've just gone through that. You got the link, so don't worry about it. Okay? Then the speech topics are due uh, the week of March, between March 1st and March 8th. Uh, okay, it tells you how to post your topics. Narrative speeches are due the week of the 8th through 11th. Make sure you check your specific date. It just says they're due between March 8th and March 11th. That's not, that's just the time they're due. That, you know, they're going to be due during this time. Make sure you check your speech date, March 8th through the 11th. Okay, so th those are the dates they're due. It doesn't necessarily mean you can do yours before that. In fact, they're open now to do those, but don't do it late. Make sure you check your specific dates and dress up. Make sure you look business professional. Your informative speeches are March 22nd through April 1st. Then your group projects are due on April 13th. And there are all the groups there, and you've already been assigned a group. And then your persuasive speeches are due between. April 19th and the 29th, and then the final exam is, oh, the final exam is, well, there's a review, uh, Lesson 16 is open April 19th, I think, or something like that, and then the final exam is open for you between May the 3rd and May the 7th. I think it actually might be open on May the 1st, but it closes on May the 7th, so don't wait till the last minute on that either, because you only have one shot. You go in. You start your exam, you finish it. If you stop, that's it. Don't tell well, I stopped, something happened. Well, I'm sorry. Go in, start the exam. It'll take you 30 minutes at the most and finish it. And then you just finish and that's it. Hit submit. Boom, it's done. Okay? That's it for this semester. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I want to welcome you to speech 1315. It's going to be a fun ride. So buckle your seatbelts because we're in for a real ride. And I'm just excited that you're here and that you're going to be a part of this class. And again, I apologize for my phone going off three different times. I have no idea who's calling me, but somebody wants to get in touch with me. Anyway, I apologize for that. And even though I turned it off, somehow it still works. I don't know. Smartphones. Maybe they're not as smart as we think they are. All right. Have a great day, have a great week, and keep in touch. If you have a problem, remember you can email me on Tuesdays or Wednesdays between 10 and 3 p.m. Central, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. All right, bye.